Hi, this is Dan Cordopassi of TSG Multimedia. Today I'm reviewing an HO Scale C41-8W locomotive from Atlas. This particular model is from an older production run. Atlas's MSRP for the current production run is $169.95. The DCC and sound version is $279.95. This model is decorated in the Union Pacific flag scheme with a yellow sill stripe. According to prototype photos I've found, 9448 got its yellow sill stripe sometime between 2008 and 2009, so it would be appropriate for any time after that. Atlas calls this model a C40-8W. However, according to the Union Pacific roster information I have, 9448 is actually a C41-8W. The two models are externally identical. The model has good detail overall. The configuration of the radiator screens in the back matches the prototype photos that I've found of this engine. The paint is crisp and even. I couldn't find any voids in the yellow on the hood doors, and all of the small writing is legible. I did think that the flag decal part is a little bit pixelated looking. I think that could have been done a little bit better. The model has a lot of detail on the fuel tank, including the air reservoirs on the engineer's side. It also includes some of the underbody plumbing, air filters, and things like that. The model includes crew figures in the cab and brake lines on the trucks. The little stencil under the number that says C40-8W, I believe should actually say C41-8W, although that's really hard to tell in prototype photos because even on the real engine, that's a very small piece of writing. The sill stripe on the front on the engineer's side droops a little bit, which is something that I didn't see in prototype photos. This problem doesn't appear on the other side of the engine. The end detail on the model is really good. It includes uncoupling levers, MU hoses, and train line air hose, as well as an MU jumper cable. The grab irons are nice and thin. The handrails are also thin and look pretty close to scale. The snowplow on the front seems pretty close to the one I've seen in prototype photos of the real engine. I did think that the windshield wipers are a little on the chunky side, but those could be replaced with aftermarket parts. The firecracker antenna on the roof is a little bit thick and chunky looking to me. Also, the smaller antennas weren't in the right places according to prototype photos. The rear of the locomotive also includes the uncoupling levers and hoses. It seems to match the prototype photos that I've found pretty well. The rear truck on the fireman's side also includes a brake chain, which is kind of neat. The model comes equipped with plastic knuckle couplers. The height on both ends match the KD coupler height gauge. The brake wheel on the back is mounted a little bit crooked. It's equipped with metal wheels. All of the axles are powered and on all 12 wheels pick up electricity. All of the wheels were engaged according to the NMRA standards gauge. The model has some neat underbody detail like sanding lines. The holes in the bottom of the fuel tank are for screws to screw it into the box that it comes in. I don't usually talk about packaging in reviews. However, since this has a screw mount box, I wanted to talk about that a little bit. I kind of have mixed feelings about it. On one hand, it does protect the engine pretty well. On the other hand, it makes it a lot more inconvenient to put the engine into the box and take it out of the box because you need a screwdriver. So I realize that a lot of people probably take these things out of the box and either store them some other way or leave them on the layout. So it's not really that big of an issue, but I just thought I'd mention that. I have this model running on DC. It's very smooth and quiet. The model weighed 17.8 ounces, and I registered 4.5 ounces of drawbar pull on my force gauge. The model includes some extra parts in the box, including sunshades and optional coupler boxes. Overall, I think this is a nice model. It really captures the look of the real 9448 pretty well. I am a little bit disappointed in some of the details, like the too fat antenna, chunky windshield wipers, crooked mounted brake wheel, and the sill stripe problem. So I'm going to take a spike off for all of that together, because I really think at an engine at this price level that should have been right. So my final verdict is 9 out of 10 spikes. If you or your company make a product that you'd like us to review, please drop us a line at reviews at tsgmultimedia.com.